with uh, having a now Tim as a passing game coordinator, uh, what are you all doing and how are you working to, to maximize his uh, abilities and, and, and information? Yeah, it's been great to add him. I mean, he's a great football mind and obviously a fantastic person, somebody that has some relationships in this building, and that helps kind of integrate him a little bit quicker. Uh, for me, it's been spectacular just to have another sounding board, somebody to talk through ideas with, uh, you know, be able to look at things a different way if, if something isn't clear how we want to, you know, land the plane, so to speak, on an idea. So it's been really valuable and look forward to working with them. What are the responsibilities in that role look like from, from your perspective when you guys are working together? Yeah, I had a similar role when I first went to the Vikings in, in 2018. I had just come off of being a coordinator and I was trying to help John D. Filippo, you know, in that role before um, some tragedy kind of shuffled my responsibilities. But... Um, I had some familiarity with what that might look like, you know, and, and what I was able to help uh, Coach D. Filippo with, and, and so that kind of helped that transition. I think, you know, again, just being able to look at things at a, a different perspective, uh, maybe bring some fresh ideas, you know, some things that maybe uh, we didn't incorporate before but wanted to be able to uh, take a peek at this spring. And, and obviously when we get into the season, some of the advanced scouting stuff and, and looking at situational football and all that will be extremely valuable. What's the key to getting so many new skill position weapons acclimated and on the same page with Ryan? Yeah, first of all, it's time, right? Time on task and just being able to get on the grass and, and work together, uh, do all the things that, that we're physically able to do and then spend time in meetings uh, talking through things. Um, it's been great to see guys get out there and and move around and the eagerness that guys have shown to uh, you know, try to build that chemistry. What did you think about Robert Woods before he got here and maybe what have been your early impressions of him? Yeah, I was fortunate enough to be with Robert in Buffalo for a year. Uh, and so I kind of knew what, what we were getting. You know, he's a hard worker. He's a guy that loves football. He's passionate about the game. Uh, so none of that surprised me uh, when he got here. Uh, I just love the way he plays. You know, I love his physical demeanor. He's got some dog to him. Uh, it's infectious to be around, and we were really fortunate to add him. What are some of your early thoughts on Traylon Burks and you know getting him here and seeing him work? So yeah, Traylon's you know in process like any rookie, you know, and figuring out uh, what our system's going to require of him and and the ways that we're going to ask ask him to do different jobs. Uh, and I think that each day he grows a little bit more comfortable with our our vernacular, our terminology. Um, you know, and, and it's been fun to watch him kind of, uh, you know, get ingratiated in the locker room and all that. So uh, he's in process, but we like where he's at. Is he kind of getting up to speed? Like, uh, I know the, the first few times we've seen him, he hasn't necessarily done as much as some of the other players out there. Is he, is he to a point yet where he's able to, to do as much as, as the other guys out there? Yeah, I kind of I wait on instruction from uh, Coach Vrabel and from Todd Torricelli, you know, in, in terms of what he's able to do. And, um, you know, we'll just dive into every moment we can with him and, and see where he's at each day. What, you know, Todd, as, as you look back at last year and, and I guess also look ahead, how important is it for you to kind of get things going with the offense early in, in a game better, you know, the, the first quarters or, or even first drives, that kind of thing? How, how significant is that? For yeah, you? definitely. You know, every aspect of our offense is something I'd take a, a critical look at um, for myself first, you know, where I can improve and and areas that, that maybe I can uh, do a better job in preparation or, or you know, understanding what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and, and certainly the beginning of games uh, is part of that. You know? And so we looked at that this offseason as a staff. And uh, again, that was something that Tim was able to give a fresh set of eyes to. And, and you go through, and, and some of it, um, you, know, you realize you were this close to you know, some really good outcomes. And then there are some where uh, you know, obviously we stubbed our toe. So we didn't do a good enough job early in games last year. That's, I'm not hiding from that. I, I completely understand that as a piece of, uh, you know, being able to start faster and put our defense in a better position. Um, you know, so there's a lot that goes into that. And we'll be, uh, we'll be practicing that and looking at that as we go through the rest of the spring and into fall. How much like does things change um, with Austin now in terms of two tight, three wide, and in terms of what you're able to do at the tight end? Yeah, you know, I, I, I uh, definitely learned last year you don't want to bank too much on a certain personnel grouping because you don't know who's going to be available. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate to add Austin. Uh, he's another veteran guy that brings a lot of savvy. Uh, we'll be looking for ways to, to, you know, highlight his skill set and, and get him 
uh, up to speed on the way we do things around here and uh, very fortunate to have him around here and you know I like me some tight ends. So, so much obviously for every rookie to learn but a quarterback like Malik, what, what do you do with him early to try to get him comfortable and how does that progress maybe during the course of the next couple of months? Yeah, I think the first thing is, you know, he's coming into a room that's a, a comfortable learning environment for him. You know, he's able to ask questions. He's able to process through some of the new stuff. Um, and I think that what's what's great about where Malik says he's got such a positive demeanor and he approaches every day just joyful to come to work. And, and that's the start of it. You know, there's some things that we're asking him to do that he's never done before. And, and that's uh, going to obviously create a, a learning curve. And I think he's done a nice job of taking that in stride. But, Change but, your... uh, speaking of, I can't spit out my words. Uh, speaking of tight ends, though, Chigakonkwo, when you initially saw you know, what he's able to bring to the table, how much can you really bring in the versatility aspect of things with him? Yeah, I was fortunate enough to spend some time with Chig prior to his pro day out there in, in Maryland. And, uh, you know, it, just immediately an infectious guy. You know, he, he's fun to be around. He's fun to talk football with. He's passionate. Obviously, he's got a physical skill set. Um, but like any rookie, there's there's going to be that kind of ramp up and figure out what he can do. And uh, and I think that he's had flashes of, of good stuff out here and flashes of some stuff that's going to be new for him. So uh, he'll be in process, but we're excited to have him. And uh, certainly, uh, I was excited to get him after spending that time with him. With a player like that that's so versatile, especially at the tight end position, like how do you weigh, okay, I could give him this much and then continue to allow him to progress and just take advantage of that versatility he has? One of the good things about Chig is he, he's very comfortable telling you, hey, I, that, that hasn't really landed yet or that doesn't quite make sense to me. And, and he has a, a great coach in Luke Steckel to help him out, um, you know, with kind of acclimating all that stuff. Um, and, and so I think there's a, a case-by-case basis to that. You know, when you're dealing with – uh, some of these guys that come in and this is a foreign system to them, they haven't been in a pro style offense, it can be a little bit longer of a curve. But uh, Chig's doing a nice job and he's picking up what we're asking him to do well. Well, now, Ryan has a train of thought with Malik Willis. How much of a benefit is having the ability to work with him, knowing that Ryan's going to be the starter and that he can kind of grow into the role that you guys see for him eventually? Yeah, it certainly takes a, a lot of the pressure out of it, you know, and there's no uh, urgency to say, hey, you got to be ready to go by a certain date. Um, but he's a very competitive player, and he's a guy that wants to pick it up. He prides himself on not making the same mistake twice, and so I think with him you'll see a, a growth period that uh, accelerates as soon as we stop these uh, spring installs and the new stuff stops hitting. Todd, Ryan has, Ryan has faced a lot of criticism since the end of last season. I guess maybe inside the building, how have you seen him handle all that and, and I guess continue to be the kind, kind of leader that this offense and this team needs moving forward. Yeah, Ryan hasn't changed. Um, you know, Ryan's not the only one taking some criticism out there. So we all understand that this is a performance-based business. And, uh, you know, we didn't end the season the way we wanted to. And so naturally, there's going to be some critique of that. Um, but we're banded together. And the cool thing we have uh, going offensively and just as a overall Titans culture and what Coach Vrabel's built, there's no one person that succeeds in – and is immune to critique, and there's no one person that's going to shoulder all the blame. So we're all in this together, and uh, you know I'm definitely uh, very grateful that Ryan's our quarterback. Would you have an idea for you, Todd, of evolving the offense to fit the new personnel that you do have? Yeah, I think you know it's it's like uh, it's like making a, a you know meal out of you know a fridge full of ingredients. You know sometimes you have to figure out what you're working with first, and then you can start to uh, you know kind of make the finished product. And so we're kind of in that phase of figuring out what we got out there and, and seeing what pieces fit where. And that's the fun part of coaching, right? Trying to get guys developed from where they're at to, you know, where they want to be and, and where they can help the team. And then we'll figure it out as we get a little bit closer to the season, what exactly that's going to look like. Along those lines, do you see Dylan Raidens more as a guard or a tackle? And how long do you, do you want that competition to kind of play out before you make a decision? Yeah, I'm not going to pigeonhole Dylan to one spot or the other. I'm going to say that competition is a very healthy thing for a, a team like ours. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see who shakes out as the best five. They're uh, they're all working very hard to turn those spots. You will not pigeonhole Le'Veon Le Le and, and Nate Davis and Ben Jones. But they've already you know established themselves in spots. You know what I mean? So those guys have already you know had you know, multiple starts at those positions. So. For, continuity's sake, though, for continuity's sake, though, don't you need to 
pick that first five as soon as possible and let them start working together and get used to each other? Yeah, I think that process will, will work itself out, you know, as guys start to, you know, edge in front of the pack um, at different positions. But that isn't something that has to happen today. I understand it's different maybe about Dylan going forward into his second year than maybe you saw as a rookie. Yeah, I think his approach has been, you know, a, a little bit more uh, mature. I think obviously he knows what to expect from the coaching staff, from the system, and so you see him a little bit more comfortable in, in certain jobs. Uh, but you know, it, like I said, it's it's a good thing to have competition in that group, and I think there's some other guys that are, you know, not going to go away quietly. He was drafted to be the, the right tackle. It, I'm just curious why it's become such like a poisonous idea that he would actually play right tackle and such a, a huge compliment to him, so to speak, that he'd be this versatile guy. Like when you draft other guys to play positions and they play those positions, you don't say it's a bad thing. But with Dylan, yeah, it's, it's a bad thing if he actually is tapped for a position, which makes it seem like he's simply not ready to play that position. Yeah, you'd have to show me where I said it was a bad thing for him to play tackle for us, because I've never said that. I think Dylan is a guy that... No, I'm saying I'm not going to say he's playing at one position or the other. There are a lot of positions on this offense open for competition right now. That's not a bad thing if Dylan goes and wins any job for us. I'm just excited to have him as a, a piece of the ingredients. I think DeMarcus Jones is better suited as a guard or a tackle. Yeah, again, I, you know, he's had success at multiple spots and played at multiple spots um, in, this, in this league. So we'll see how that shakes out when the you know, final, uh, final roster is developed. Todd, you know, with with Malik, first year you've kind of had a, a rookie and you know a guy that probably needs some polish and some teaching. How do you, you know, kind of proportion your time maybe uh, a little differently than perhaps the year before? Yeah, I've been uh, fortunate in my career to be around some young quarterbacks and some rookie quarterbacks, and so uh, you know I've been a part of that process before. Uh, we get a lot of extra rookie meeting time with uh, with the schedule lots in you know in this phase of the off season, and so. Uh, you know, we'll just take that on a day by day basis and, and see where we go, you know, with extra meetings and walkthroughs and all that. But you certainly handle a rookie quarterback differently than you would some other positions. With AJ, with, with AJ now gone and a whole new cast of characters, it seems like at wide receiver, how much more are you putting on Nick Westbrook Aquino's plate this offseason? Man, we've been comfortable putting a lot on his plate for a long time. He's a reliable and dependable player for us. Uh, I think his versatility shows, uh, you know, and I think that he's able to plug and play at, at Z and X and even at F at, at times. Um, and so, you know, seeing him uh, hop around a little bit has been uh, an impressive thing. And, and certainly he's a guy that we can put a lot on his plate. Like faster? Faster? One more time. You feel like you guys are faster? Uh, faster just from overall speed standpoint? You know, I, I think that, you know, some players have definitely developed their skill sets. I think that... Uh, in certain position groups, we've added some speed that maybe we didn't have uh, last year. Um, we, we'll find out what that looks like, uh, you know, at the at the final product in, in terms of who makes the roster and who doesn't. That process of working with Malik is that kind of like a ground up building experience? Is there there like uh, techniques that you're or skills that you're trying to? work with him to acquire or tweak? Like, how does that process work for him? Yeah, I think it, particularly with a young quarterback, you never want to skip steps or, or assume that they are comfortable with a, a certain technique or a certain scheme. And so ground up is a, a fair way to say it, you know, not because his ability or his knowledge is at the ground, but just because you want to be thorough in the development and understanding of, of what we're going to ask him to do. And so uh, I enjoy that piece of it because it's it's teaching the game so that we see it the same way by the time he's got to take the field, uh, you know, in real real action.